Let's just do it. We don't need any notes. We're just gonna wing it. We're gonna be absolutely fine. Hey guys, my name is Johanna James. This channel is all about ancient history and mystery. And today we are gonna be going to India. Not literally, like educationally. It's really cool. <laughs> So actually India is just such a huge topic. We're not gonna go and learn all of India, but we're gonna look specifically at possibly my new favorite, most impressive ancient mystery that there is. It's the Barabar Caves. So what are the Barabar Caves? What are they? They are a series of man-made caves. At some point, some very, very skilled persons uh, went in and they've made these incredibly precise incredibly like mirror finish just utterly amazing cave system and nobody really knows why or how because yet again the age-old conundrum of you can't really date stone not that accurately so we don't know who did this if you weren't looking for the barbar -bar caves i imagine like you probably wouldn't see it here like this it's, this is the time the steps going up and look at this tiny little door teeny weeny weeny little door. It's a bit of like um, a kind of Doctor Who TARDIS situation where from the outside, you it doesn't look like what would be on the inside. No, wait, that was a bad reference because it's smaller on the inside than it is on the outside. That was a bad reference. Don't, don't look at that. It's deceptive about what it would look on the inside from the outside because on the outside, obviously it just looks like a rock. And then you go in and it's these super precise curved tunnel thing. And the more you look into it, especially with like science, the more utterly astounding this task was. Like this is a feat of extreme engineering. And also just how did they do this? How did they cut and polish this rock to like literally mirror precision? I mean, a lot of stuff in Egypt is like mirror shiny, but this is possibly the most flat mirror shined polished stone that I've seen. I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it. So what's the, like, the traditional story? So if you go on like Wikipedia, it says that the Barabar Caves were attributed to around 300 BCE because, and only because, there is some inscriptions in various places around uh, the site which say the name of this certain emperor. Cool, okay. But when you look at the inscription and then you look at the <laughs> precise work, of the person who actually carved out the cave. Yeah, it doesn't really seem like the same person to me. It doesn't seem like the same like level of skill. And I always find it really weird. Why would you make a statue or build a cave or build a box in the Therapeum? Why would you do that and go through all the effort of making it literally the most precise thing that you could possibly do? And then the person who just scribbles their name on it is like an intern. It, it doesn't, I would be so annoyed if I had made that box and then somebody just wrote their name on like that. Yeah, I smell a fish, do you? Let's have a look uh, here, yes, okay, here. Again, when I'm talking about the mirror shine that you get off this wall, they've polished this rock to just unbelievably shiny standards. Uh, and then you've got writing, which I don't know. I mean, I'm not like, a, I'm not like a graphic designer, but that writing doesn't seem like designed to go there. And it's just on one side of the wall, not the other one. Like, I like things to be a little bit more symmetrical or maybe centered or just why, why just bung it there? You know what I mean? It just seems, it seems a little bit added. So I think that it's not entirely correct to say for certain that this place is dated to whoever wrote on the door. You know what I mean? It's kind of like the analogy of, of a house. It's your house, you bought it and you live there. Uh, but did you build it? Probably not. You probably didn't build your own house. You probably didn't like lay the foundations and like sort it out. And one day you will sell that house to somebody else and then that will be their house and they'll live there. And this kind of goes on and on and on and on, but it doesn't mean that you made the house. And I think that that is something when I look at all these ancient sites, I'm like, yeah, cool, that person, this is evidence that that person was there at that time. Great, we can check that off the list, but we can't say for sure that that person living there at that time was the one that made it. We just can't. So the shape of the caves as well. So I obviously am obsessed with Egypt and I've seen with my own eyes some really impressive precision 
stonework in Egypt. For example, inside the the, the Great Pyramid, um, there is like the king's chamber, which is this crazy precision chamber, which has this stones that are like fitted together so tightly that you can't even, you can't even like wedge like an eyelash in there. It's, it's so crazy precise. Um, however, it is a rectangle. It's kind of squares and corners and which is impressive, but what's even more impressive is curves. It's it's like another level of genius. Uh, the the scope of that going wrong, you have to you have there's so much maths and geometry involved in that. And the thing about the Barabar caves is that they are not square. They are not rectangle. They are curved. Continuously curved. And when they have been scanned and um, like 3D scan, LiDAR scan, the, the maths, the results that are coming back, these things are, are like perfect, which is such an insane feat to do. Especially as uh, it was pointed out to me that how would you even see to do that inside a cave? Like it's a very, very hard thing. It's one thing um, cutting a precise box or something where you can do it out and you have loads of light. How do you cut into the rock face with all of the dust and everything and how do you how do you even breathe inside such a small space? How do you get the light in there? Because there's no natural sunlight apart from coming from like one hole in the corner. If you're working at the other end, how do you even see what you're doing? Uh, and you'd have to have candles, you'd have to have fire, but then that would also be incredibly hot. That would also have smoke and fumes. And you would, there would be like, there'd be evidence for like lots of fire prolonged over a long period of time. Cause remember like chiseling stone with hand tools takes forever. So there would be sort of burn marks and there isn't anything like that inside the cave. So there's this huge like mind problem. Like just physically, how did they do it? With the light and the oxygen and the mess and like it's a lot. It reminds me of all of the, that the odd old megalithic precision work that you see in other places in the world, uh, like in Egypt, um, where things look, they don't look old from the past. They look like old from the future, if that makes sense. Like it, it, this thing belongs more in a sort of the year 3050 than they do in the year 3050 BC. Does that make sense? It looks like sort of sci-fi, dystopian. It's making me, it's, it's very sci-fi vibes, basically. And these caves are like pretty much the most sci-fi thing that I've ever seen. And also what's the purpose of them? Because if they were for like storing things, like why would you need the precision? Why would you need the curved walls? That doesn't make, you could literally just chip it out. There's many, many, many cave systems all over the world where they're just like rough cut, like it didn't, it didn't matter. So obviously it mattered for some reason why the, why it was so precise and why it was so polished. And even the shape, let's, let's have a little look at the door here. So here's one of the doors here. And again, they're using this shape, this kind of rectangular, but with a bit of a flare at the bottom. And we've seen this in so many places all over the world. How are they all coming to the same design? Like, I, I, it just seems crazy that everybody's just decided that the fashion for the doors and the windows and the altar places, that they're all gonna be like this shape. It sounds like there was a mother's meeting somewhere and they all decided that, do you know what I mean? Like, yes, we're going to go, this season, we're gonna go for this shape only. Barry, don't you dare do a circular door. You know what I mean? And again, just going back to like the science of this place, uh, there is a an amazing documentary called BAM, Builders of the Ancient Mysteries. And I'm gonna put a link below where you can go and watch it. I found this documentary. Well, there's a series of documentaries. Um, I found them in the lockdown and they were great viewing. Um, they kind of pulled together all of the ancient mysteries in the world. And it was the first time that I really saw the Barabar Cave. So I'm gonna attribute all of my research to these guys. They actually went out, I think two times, and they, uh, scanned it first of all how impressive they, they they got these amazing like 3d renderings to really show the impressiveness and the beauty of this place they also went back and they were looking at the the polish the finish and just how smooth how flat 
is the surface, are the surface of these caves. And what they found was like pretty astonishing. They found that it was basically mathematically perfectly flat on a curve, which is just like, what? In fact, it was so flat and smooth that it is, it is flatter and more smooth than the human eye can kind of comprehend. And again, these are supposed to be man-made, hand-tooled, carved caves. And they've managed to get the smoothness of the walls and the ceilings to a smoothness that is just like mathematically better than what the human eye can see. There's something going on in the construction of this. Just who? It's just red flags everywhere. And I might have had an opportunity. I might have had an opportunity to go out and visit the Barabar Caves possibly this year. Ugh, I will keep you updated. Um, not a, not a tour. I'm not running a tour. I'd, I'd be joining someone else's adventure, but obviously bringing you guys with me. Um, I, I gotta see this, I've gotta see this with my own eyes because it's just, it's babbling. See, when I thought of like ancient India, I thought of like the super ornate, amazing stone cart, like they, these guys knew how to carve stone for sure. But I just pictured like these amazing ornate temples where every single surface is covered in something intricate and fascinating. Yet the Barbar Caves are like the total opposite of that. They are completely pristine. There's no engravings apart from the names that were carved on here and there at some point. Like, it makes me think maybe, maybe they were functional. Like maybe there's a functional reason to the shape, to the smoothness. Like it can't just have been to be pretty because if you were gonna make something pretty, I, I think that the ornate stuff's prettier. Mm. Were they like trying to encapsulate mathematical knowledge to like pass on? Is that what they were doing? I mean, I really wish the people who made these like ancient mystery things, I really wish they'd left like, you know, a guidebook or something. Well, anyway, today this was a short and sweet. I just wanted to let you guys know again, if you want to learn like in detail and see the most amazing like drone footage and 3D renderings, then uh, do go and watch BAM. Builders of the Ancient Mysteries, because it is just phenomenally good. Um, and I think you can rent it. I think there's some, some. It, I'll, I'll put all the links I can find to below. Um, some parts of it are free on YouTube, other parts I paid and I watched like the whole, I think it was like a two hour, maybe three hour documentary. Like you, you get, you know, bang for your buck on it. Um, and I forced my dad to watch it. <laughs> my dad, if you guys don't know, is like, quite a huge skeptic of um, ancient mysteries and history and I made him watch it and then they were just throwing all these like fire points out about um, about the historical timeline being totally wrong and I could see my dad just going interesting that's interesting um, well yeah dad it is interesting it's phenomenal get involved get your nan involved everyone's got to hear about this because it just doesn't get on the news. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, then I mean, why not? It's pretty fun over here. Uh, we we just we just got past a hundred thousand hunters uh, joining hunt for ancient history and ancient tech. And uh, great, great news. I'll see you later. I can never end these things, so I'll see you later. And um, you know, cheerio.